Hello and welcome to Infinity. The quick way of doing a vignette using shapes is simply to go to a rectangle and draw that across the screen here, across the picture, and make that black. Then take an ellipse, draw that across here, and make that white. And add a blur to it say 400 then group those together and change the blend mode to multiply and adjust opacity very quick something that bugs me about this is that the outside here I'd like it to sort of like fade off into the corner and I'd like to be able to do maybe a bit more with the inside so let's start again now when we do the rectangle, same sort of start, make it black. But what I'm going to do now is something different, which is I'm going to go to the layer effects here and go down to the gradient overlay at the bottom. And then we can adjust this here at the moment it starts off like this. So let's make it a an elliptical one, so it's going out from the centre. and Change the gradient to the other way around, so I just do a reverse. And this gives me this shape here. You can play around here with, with the shape of it and so on. So I can turn the X separately and the Y separately to make it bigger. And what I'm getting when doing this, once I banish the blacks right out of the corners, I've got a nice gradient here going in. If I change the blend mode here to multiply, I'm not going to get anything fancy, so I'm just going to put that back there. Just to get the effect, even here, change this to multiply, it's not going to do anything. I need to carry on that process as before. So right click on here, get the ellipse tool here, draw an ellipse across here, make that white. There we go. Group it and then change the blend mode overall to multiply. But of course I need to get this ellipse and blur it. Instead of putting a separate layer blur, I can do it with the FX as well. So I'll go to the FX here, just use the Gaussian blur at the top and set this to 400. And here I've got now, let's close this. Get rid of the blue lines. Now I've got a vignette where it fades off to the corner. If I want to adjust that again, I go back to the rectangle, click on the effects, and I can play around with the scaling here and so on. I can change the this, I can change the offset to move it around the place, and so on. But normally I'm just going to leave it in the middle so that it goes to the corner each time nicely, but it gives me additional level of control. What I can also do with the ellipse now, if I go up here, is I want to convert it to curves, which means I can now go down to the node tool and I can reshape this. So this guy here is the main subject. So let's pull it over there for him and bring this down a bit over here so it's not so, so much. And I can even put something like gradients across it. So get the gradient tool, click across here, then at this end I'm going to want to be white, and at the other end there to affect that, perhaps make that just transparent so it's picked up by the rest of it. So now I've got the gradient of the ellipse here pushing the light over to here. And I've got the background rectangle, instead of just steady grey, it's fading to the corners, which I can adjust. I can play around with the shape of the curve. I can even do things like I can take that curve now, hit Control j to duplicate it, pull it outside this group, and it's got a light area on it like that. So I can use that to light that up uh, with something like, go down to some kind of overlay, bit much by itself but I can bring this down and just turn it up 
I get a bit more actually light. I'm adding light in now over the guy like that. I can even take that out there and use it as a mask to do other things like sharpening and so on. So there you go. It is a far more complex compound vignette. Thank you very much for watching.